Hey guys, this is Alan and today I'm going to be giving you all the tips that you need in order to successfully grow your own star fruit or also known as carambola. From how much sun you need, winter protection and towards the end of the video I will also be giving you my personal growing tips which you will not be able to find anywhere else. So let's get started. Star fruit also known as carambola. It's a tropical tree that likes warmer temperatures, but surprisingly, it's not that complicated to grow. All you gotta do is follow a few simple uh, growing tips that I'm gonna be giving you and you'll be successful. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is my star fruit. This is actually one of the oldest trees that I have here in the ground. I think I planted this tree maybe 2017, late 17 early 2018 but anyways let's go ahead and talk about the growing requirements for this plant sun requirements this plant needs full sun it will take full sun anywhere in the united states yes if it takes full sun in my area it will take full sun in yours will it grow in the shade no unfortunately it will not grow in the shade and that's the reason why my tree right here it's not as big as it could could be it is about eight feet tall right now maybe a little taller it is about the same width um, but for being in the ground that long it should be at least you know four to five times bigger and the reason it's this small is because well it's in this area shelter area right here that is fully shaded most of the day and until about a year ago back here there was also a massive tree that was shading the western sun in the late afternoon so this tree right here did not get any sun at all and it actually stayed about this size right here for like four to five years and it never grew because it didn't have enough sunlight it was able to get a little bit of dappled sunlight but that was not enough this plant needs full sun my neighbor took his tree down because well it was dying back and then as soon as he did that within six months I mean this plant just showed up now afternoon sun is not ideal because it doesn't have as much energy as morning sun but regardless that was enough to get this tree going and it's doing great right now so yes full sun and if you don't have full sun as much sun as you are able to give it now there are a few things you need to keep in mind your tree will sunburn the first summer you have it in the, uh, in the ground especially if your temperatures are over 100 degrees that is normal do not panic the sun will not kill your star fruit i can promise you that it will not kill it now once the tree roots itself fully in the ground which will take about a year then the tree will not take as much sun damage anymore you will get a few leaves that will get sunburned just like like this right here but that will not damage your tree at all and it's going to be be very minimal now your trees in containers yes they will sunburn so those guys you want to sh shade them after it gets past 100 degrees but even then the sun will not kill them they jo just are going to look ugly all right guys let's go ahead and talk about the winter protection this tree in my area is frost sensitive what that means is any areas that ice touches will kill your plant so it's very easy to protect this plant because all you gotta do is cover the plant make sure you're covering it's not touching your plant so the cold doesn't transfer onto your foliage and you'll be good to go this plant right here actually has taken 19 degrees ambient temperature without any issues yes it's one of the hardiest cold hardiest plants that we have here that are tropical ambient temperature coldest recorded 19 degrees how much cold, colder uh, temperatures can you take I'm not sure because that's just the coldest it's ever been in my area I guess that's something you can try in your area but I can say that if your soil freezes because it gets so cold in your area for that long to freeze the soil then your plants probably going to die so there you go frost protection and you will be good to go let's talk about the structure of the plant well naturally most star fruits are gonna give you a single trunk just like this one right here that is normal and then it will branch out and create a really dense semi round canopy so you really don't have to prune or do anything for this plant just to look nice I, I haven't pruned this plant at all 
But then again, it took a long time to actually grow because it didn't have enough sunlight. And if you want to prune it, you can. It's up to you. Uh, naturally, the tallest star fruit I ever seen in person, South Florida, was about 20 feet tall. And that's ideal conditions, ideal temperatures. So if you are anywhere else, you can expect your star fruit to get between, I would say, 10 to 15 feet give or take a few feet now remember your tree will take a year to root itself in the ground and then it will start to grow so how fast it grows it depends on your temperatures in your area but yeah you can prune it down if you want they are very easy to prune or you can just leave it as is very ornamental and even if you don't like the fruits it's a really nice tree to have the root system of this plant is fibrous and shallow so it's safe to plant close to structures. Obviously the canopy is gonna grow into your house if you have it too close to your house, but the root system of this plant is not big enough, strong enough to damage anything around it. So that's a good thing to know. Pollination. How many plants do you need to get fruit? Well, surprisingly, this plant is self-fertile. You only need one plant to get fruit. But the more plants you have, the more they are going to cross-pollinate and give you more fruits. But I promise you, you only need one. You will get more fruits than you can handle as the plant gets older. One thing you gotta keep in mind though, is once you put your tree in the ground, you may not see fruits for the first year or so. And that is normal. Because the plant needs to be fully rooted in the ground before it will start to flower again. Another thing is in containers, the plants will tend to drop the fruits a lot easier than the ones in the ground, simply because, well, they don't hold their fruits well. All right, let's talk about flowering. This plant normally flowers in my area in the fall. In my area, that will be around October, November time, you will start seeing flowers. Flowering will depend on the ambient temperatures around your plant. So warmer days, cooler nights will trigger flowering. And that is normal for this plant. Now from the time that it flowers to the time that the fruit ripens, it usually takes a few months. But keep in mind, your fruits are going to be ripening in the middle of the winter. So even though this plant will take really cold temperatures, if it gets really that cold for that long, what's going to happen is your fruits are gonna drop. So if you get a lot of fruits, but then it gets really cold that winter, well, count on losing all your fruits. It will only fruit once a year. Now, sometimes in my area, I seen a fruit in the spring again, but that is simply because our night temperatures are still cooler and the day temperatures are rising. So the plant just thinks it's fall again, and then it, fruit, it, it tries to flower. But to be honest, most of those flowers do not get pollinated, and the ones that do get pollinated, the fruits do not have enough time to fully ripen before the summer hit, uh, hits, and then most of those fruits just drop anyway. So count on just getting fruits in the fall, and then those fruits ripen the following spring. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about watering. How do you water your star fruit? This is extremely important for you to understand, so make sure you pay attention. The root system of this plant, as we talked earlier, is shallow and also fibrous. Any plant that has a fibrous root system, especially in areas with warmer temperatures, you gotta understand the plant will have a harder time drinking water from the soil than anywhere else, where the temperatures are cooler and you have more humidity in the air. So in my area, you need to keep this plant like literally almost wet during the summer when the temperatures are 100 degrees and or higher and the reason i say that is because in containers normally we follow the 50 percent rule which works for most plants but if you keep your star fruit exposed to full sun i would say do not go any lower than 75 percent it's not about the volume of water it's about the frequency this plant has a hard time drinking the water from the soil. So what usually happens is, even if the soil is moist, the plant is not able to uptake the water quick enough to cool off 
when the temperatures are extremely hot. So the plant is gonna run out of water and even though the soil is moist, which is enough for like 98% of our plants here at the nursery, it's not enough for the star fruit. And the plant will wilt and die in a matter of hours. Not days, guys, hours. Especially if your plant is exposed to full sun, even if it goes semi-moist. You will never be able to overwater star fruit. I have killed probably a few thousand plants. I'm not proud of it, but it's just part of learning. And I can tell you, not once have I ever overwatered our star fruit. It's just not possible. The plant, the root system of this plant is designed to be in wetter soils. Whatever it's naturally from, I don't know, it probably rains a lot. And if it was able to uptake all the water in the soil, it probably would have never made it. So that's the reason why this plant naturally does not drink all the water that's in the soil. So make sure you water frequently. It's about the frequency, it's not about the volume of water. I could water this plant right now for hours and hours. And guess what? Tomorrow, I'm still gonna have to water it. So, frequency. Right now, we have it on automatic irrigation. So this mister right here comes on right now three times daily. And every time that it gets water, it gets water for about five minutes. I mean, it's not really that long. It's just long enough to wet the potty mix and good to go. So it's not like it drinks more water, it's just it needs the soil to be wetter. Now if the temperatures in your area are mild and you have clouds in the sky and it's just pleasant and nice and you like being outside because the night temperatures are so amazing, well guess what? You're not going to experience that watering issue. So for you it's going to be like watering any other plant that has shallow roots. The root system of this plant normally only goes a few feet in the ground. So deep watering does not normally help this plant. Now if your plant is in the ground, for the first summer you can follow the finger method. I got videos online where I talk specifically how to water your plant the first summer in the ground or the first year in the ground and that is technically how you're going to water this plant. Follow the finger method and you will be fine. Just make sure to not let it go dry. It's always better to keep this plant wet than to let it dry. In extreme temperatures, it will die in a few hours. And that is how most people kill this plant in my area. They go home, they water it that morning, they go to work, leave their house, come back later that day and their plant is dead. Then they call me and they're like, man, you sold me a sick plant. And I'm like, dude, I send them a picture of all the plants that I have here. Do my plants look sick to you? And then they're like, no. Then why do you think your plants are sick? The only thing that changed in the past 48, 72 hours, it's you. You started taking care of the plant and now it's dead. And you know, before anybody buys my plants, I always tell them exactly how to grow their plants so there are no questions. I always tell them, how to water the plant, I tell them about the root system of this plant, I tell them what's going to kill their plant, and I always tell them if you have any issues, make sure you let me know before the plant's dead, because after it's dead, I can't help you. But anyways, yeah, they come back from work, the plant's dead, and then they wonder where it died. I mean, I'm watering this plant three times daily. Just because you take it home and you water it one time, it doesn't mean it will make it through the entire day. When the day prior, I was watering this plant three times daily, because that's how often it's drying out on me. But you know what guys, that's how it is and that's why I try to make these videos to make it easier for you so you don't make the same mistakes. But yeah, so make sure you water frequently. You will not be able to overwater this plant as long as you have drainage in the ground. Now let's talk about container growing. Can you grow this plant in a container? Most plants that have shallow and fibrous roots are ideal plants to grow in containers long term. And the reason for that is because it's just the type of root system they have. They're not invasive, they're not thick, they don't usually become as root bound, grossly root bound as other plants with thicker roots, so they can stay in a container a lot longer than most plants. So yeah, this plant does great in a container. No issues, so you just gotta make sure though you water. Because if you keep your plant in that container, it relies on you 100% for sustainment. The minute you stop taking care of it, your plant's dead. All right, let's go ahead and talk about fertilization. Look at my chickens. 
fertilize fertilizing machines. That's what I call them. Killers. My assassins right there. But anyways, um, fertilization. If your plant is in the ground in, in a container, you can just fertilize it with any slow release fertilizer or any organic um, fertilizer of your choice. So it, it's, they are really not that complicated. We use the same fertilizer in all our plants, picture on the screen right now, and that works on everything. Every single plant in our nursery uses that fertilizer. Why? I don't know, guys. It's a slow release fertilizer. It's one of the first ones I started using, and it's been working, and then I'm just afraid to switch to anything else. The numbers are irrelevant. I came to find that out over the years, so it's about the slow release. In containers, any slow release fertilizer will work. Now, if your plant's in the ground, like this star fruit right here, this is another one that I have in the ground, and this one's only a year and a half, and it's already 10 feet tall. And the difference between the other one and this one is this one's in, in the sun, the other one's in the sh shade, so that's the main difference. Um, but yeah, if your plant is in the ground, you can use any organic fertilizer. Any organic fertilizer. So here, to be honest, my chickens are right here, and they poop a lot and I have a mister system in there so their poop gets mixed with water all the time and then that water penetrates the soil and then it just unsure one way or another with rain and all the water it makes its way down here close to the root system of my plant now if my plant's sm smart and it's hungry it will grow roots where the food is and the food's gonna be generally in this area right here if it's not hungry and then maybe it's sick of uh, eating chicken poop, then it will stop growing roots in this area. It will let those roots die and then will grow roots somewhere else. But anyways, if you don't have a setup like I do, then what you can do is you can just put compost in the ground. You can put chicken poop in there. You can put horse poop in there, cow poop. Just make sure you put it on the surface away from the trunk and put mulch on top of it to keep it moist because you're not feeding your plant directly when you do that you're actually indirectly feeding your plant you're feeding the living organisms in the soil then like the roly polies the crickets the roaches the worms all those guys they eat it up then they poop now their poop small enough when mixed with water when that water penetrates the soil full of nutrients then your plants able to eat that that's a process it takes time so the key though is keeping them organic matter moist but anyways, to be honest, I don't do anything else besides that here for the star fruit. And it seems to be growing great. Um, no issues at all. I got my yellow bells right here overgrowing my poor star fruit. But winter is coming. So, you know, frost protection, this thing is too big to protect. So I'm just going to let my yellow bells right here naturally frost protect my star fruit and see how, wind, how it does uh, during the winter time. But that is how you are going to fertilize your star fruit in containers or in the ground. That brings us to my personal growing tips. I will not, you will not be able to find these anywhere online because I had to learn this the hard way. Remember the root system of this plant is shallow, shallow and fibrous. So remember, keep it wet because if you don't, your plant, even if it's moist in string temperatures, it will wilt and die in a matter of hours. I'm not exaggerating. It will die very quickly. Now, the fruits, even though they, uh, they grow very easily in the cold, the plant will take really cold temperatures, the fruits will not, they will drop. Especially if your temperatures get in the mid-20s or lower for more than a few hours. So that's normal, don't worry about it. Now, how long do they take to fruit if you have seedlings? The star fruits grown from seed, they usually take a few years to start fruiting. Don't worry about it, it's fine. They are not true to seed, so the fruits you get are not gonna be 100% identical to the fruit that you got the seeds from. That's fine, they all taste sweet, they're amazing, doesn't matter. Now, if you have a named grafted variety, those fruit the same year. But your plant is not going to be old enough or strong enough to actually hold the fruits. If your plant is in a container, it will drop its fruits a lot easier than the ones in the ground. But the ones that you have in the ground will take at least one year in the ground to fully root itself in the ground before it will actually start producing 
and be able to hold its fruit. That is normal. And this is in ideal conditions. Let's say during the first year you plant wilt, you forget to water or something happens to it. Now it's going to take even longer to root itself in the ground. So you're going to be waiting longer for fruits. Another thing about this plant that I did not talk about earlier. This plant is wind sensitive. It hates the wind cold hot it hates it it is normal for this plant to fully defoliate when it gets super windy make sure you water because when it's windy and your plant goes dry your plants dead simple as that but don't worry about it if it defoliates as long as you keep it watered it will actually grow new leaves within the next few months so this is normal especially for plants in containers once you plants in the ground for a few years you will not experience this problem anymore this is mainly for plants and containers. Well, those were my personal tips. Hopefully this helps you out, guys. Don't forget to like the video, click the notification bell, and most importantly, subscribe. All right, guys, I will see you next time.